Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hub. I'll be your instructor for government. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, post UTME, WASE, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEB, Calbipedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, ETC. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to be updated on new videos. Ready for today's class? Okay, let's get started. In today's topic, we are going to look at or discuss constitution and constitutionalism. Specifically, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to define a constitution, identify the sources of a constitution, discuss the scope of a constitution, state the functions of a constitution, and describe the various or discuss the various forms or types of constitution, then explain constitutionalism and discuss the purposes of constitutionalism. Now, Let's start with the meaning of a constitution. What is a constitution? Constitution is defined as a whole body of fundamental laws, rules, regulations, conventions, and traditions according to which a state is governed. So we are talking about the basic law, the fundamental law that determines how a country is governed. Now, we, it, constitution is a law. But not all laws are constitutions. Now, the legislature is responsible for making laws in a country. And you see that every year laws are made. You will see the act of this, labor act, this one. There are many laws, penal codes. There are many laws in country. But the constitution is the basic, the fundamental one that defines how the state is governed. And it is supreme and above every other law because every other law is subject to the constitution. Wherever a law, is provi a, the provision of any law clashes with the provision of the grand norm, that is the constitution of a country, that law is null and void. The constitution will prevail, the provision. So it is the basic law, the fundamental law that governs the activities of a state. Now, let's look at the sources of the constitution. Now, when we say the sources of a constitution, we are talking about the areas where we get the provisions, all those things in the constitution. Where do we get them from? Now, number one is what we call acts of parliament or states or legislation. Now, this refers to laws made by the, uh, the legislature. Now, when a constitution is to be drafted, some laws made by the legislatures are put into the are put into consideration and can be made to be part of the provisions of the constitution. The second one is what we call judicial precedents or court rulings. Now, these are the laws, these are the rulings rather, made by the or pronouncements of higher courts, especially the Supreme Court. This is their pronouncement. So these pronouncements over the years have acquired the stages of law because lower courts are expected to follow the rulings of a higher court when they are handling similar cases. So these laws, these rule, uh, rulings or judicial precedents in framing or drafting a constitution, relevant ones are put into consideration are made and made to be part of the provisions of the constitution. The history of the people can also be the source of the constitution. Also, international laws, the laws made by international bodies, can also form part of the provisions of a constitution. Works of scholars, like if you look at Avidite, 
talked about the rule of law. Abbott Van Dyson talks about the rule of law, supremacy of law. And I see section one, subsection one of 1999 Constitution of Niger Federal Republic of Nigeria talks about supremacy of the Constitution. So works of scholars like Baron de Montesquieu, John Locke, some of them are enshrined in the Constitution. Customs and traditions of the people can form part of the constitution. That is why countries that operate what we call unwritten constitution, their customs and traditions can be part of the constitution. Then decrease can be part of a constitution. Now, when we say decrease, we, are, we mean laws, pronouncements made by military government. So whenever a military government comes into power, they rule with what we call military decrees. So these decrees, some relevant ones, can form part of the constitution when drafting the constitution. If you look at 1999 Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria, you see that some of them are decrees, uh, the provisions, right? Now, if uh, constitutional conferences can also be parts of the constitution, provisions of the constitution. And what is a constitutional conference? We are referring to gatherings, meetings, to discuss a constitution. Now, the agreements in that meeting can be part of a constitution. Nigeria, during the colonial era, we've had several constitutional conferences, the Baran Conference, Lagos Conference, London Constitutional Conference. So we've had various conferences and they formed part of the constitution. Also, past constitutions, example, in Nigeria, our current constitution, 1999 Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, uh, actually drew some of its provisions from 1979 Constitution. So whenever a constitution is made, reference is made on the previous constitution, those ones that are relevant can be made to be part of the constitution. Even the past constitution can be outside the country, constitution from other countries. So those ones that are relevant can be made to be part of the constitution of a country. So these are the sources from which a nation derives the provisions of its constitution. Now let's look at the scope, the areas covered by the constitution. Now. <clears throat> In the Constitution, you always see what we call the preamble stating the objectives of the state. That's why it starts with, the preamble we always start with, we, the people of this. So it will state the provision of the Constitution. Now, in the Constitution, you also see the structure of government and the powers allotted to each arm of government. You also see in the Constitution, it will cover the party system to be operated in the country, whether um, one party system, multi party, two party system, you see it. it. You also see in the Constitution the fundamental human rights of citizens of that country. You also see the Constitution covering the system of government to be operated, whether parliamentary or presidential, whether unitary or federal. You also see some of the major governmental institutions and establishments. You see them, the methods of how revenue allocation that they have to share. The revenue of the state is also in the Constitution. The measures and procedures for the amendment of the Constitution is also part of the Constitution. Now, let's look at the functions or importance of a Constitution. Why do we have a Constitution? Why is it important that every nation must keep a Constitution? One, it stimulates what we call the modus operandi that of the government. That is how the government will operate the mode of oppression of government. It's stipulated by the Constitution. It also stipulates the ideological direction of the state and the government. The Constitution stipulates how the government can be changed. The process and methods of changing the government, the electoral system. You see also the arms of government. It names the arms of government and designate them with functions, with the appropriate functions. It, because that is why it is in the constitution that you can see their powers and know when abuse of power or encroachment on, of power, uh, on uh, another uh, organ's power comes in. You see it in the constitution 
And also, it serves as a limit to the powers of the government because it specifies their powers and therefore places limitations, ensuring that no arm of government will go beyond the powers allotted to it by the Constitution. The Constitution also serves as a symbol of nationhood and sovereignty. It serves as a symbol of a nation and also showing that the, con the country is a sovereign state. It stipulates the party system to be operated on the state. The Constitution protects is a way, one of the major way to protect human rights. It protects human rights by stipulating the human rights in the Constitution and a violation of this right becomes a violation of the Constitution of the land. It promotes the rule of law because you can't talk about the supremacy of law without talking about the supremacy of the Constitution of the country. Then it promotes democracy because it's in line with democratic principles that <clears throat> a state must be governed according to stipulated rules and regulations laid down and made by the people of that state. So these are the importance and functions served by the constitution. Now let's look at the types of constitution. We have different types of constitution. Now let's take each one. Now before we talk about the types, now let's leave tell you we have what we call constitutions based on the codification or documentation. We have constitutions based on what we call amendment procedures. We have constitution based on relationship between levels of government. Now, this is how we can classify constitution. But based on this classification, now let's look at the types of constitution. Now, we have what we call a written constitution. And what is a written constitution? Now, this is a constitution that has its provisions codified in a single document. So you take a document and you see the constitution in that document. Example, the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria is uh, the 1999 constitution. It's a written constitution. You can hold it as a book. If you buy and you can see it in bookshops, even you can see it as an app. So you can hold it, it's in a single document. That is written constitution. It's not primarily that it is written or typed. No, it is because the provisions, what we call this constitution, can or all the provisions of this constitution can be found in one book that is available for everybody. Now, let's look at the features of a written constitution. One, provisions are in a single document, all. Two, it's usually federal in nature. It's usually a federal constitution because such constitution usually shares powers among levels of government. Written constitution is always rigid because it will stipulate provisions for its amendment and it's difficult to amend. And uh, this constitution is adopted in a large multi-ethnic society. That is why it is always federal in character. Then the constitution usually, a written constitution, must have a preamble or introduction stating the objective and the spirit of the constitution. The constitution stipulate, a, a written constitution will always stipulate the procedure for each amendment. That is how you can carry out amendment and the constitution. Now let's look at the merits. Why will some countries adopt a written constitution? Now, you can see, a, one, it is simple to understand as it is in a single document. It's simple to understand it because it's a single document, then it is easily available. Nigerian constitution, US constitution, Indian constitution, you can, in Nigeria, you can get our constitution from bookshops. You can download this as an app. You can download it as a PDF file. So it's easily available and accessible. Now, it is easily referenced because it is clearly documented. You can say, okay, refer to section one, subsection this, of this constitution. So it is easily referenced. When one violates the constitution, we state it. This is the area, or even in interpretation, it is easy to reference a provision of a constitution because it is well and clearly documented in cap chapters, in, um, in um, sections. Also, you have a prevent dictatorial tendencies and arbitrary rule. 
because it stipulates the hands of government and their powers, and the citizens and people are aware of the constitution. They know the provisions of the constitution. They can easily reference it whenever the government abuses its power. And also, because it is difficult to amend, the government cannot always do what? Manipulate it or try to amend it in its own selfish interest. Also, it, the interpretation of the constitution does not pose much difficulty because it is clearly documented. Also, it caters for divergences and uh, ethnic diversities because it is federal in character. It allows for adequate consultation before it is amended. Such constitution, because it is difficult to amend, it stipulates the procedure, therefore it allows for adequate consultation. It protects human rights. This is the best to protect human rights because people can easily know their rights because it is in a document that can be easily available to the people. Now, it reduces clash of functions of the arms of government. It reduces the clash of functions because the constitution defines the powers of each arm of government, which reduces class because each one will know its function that is clearly stated in that document called the constitution. Now, let's look at the, the problems. Let's look at the disadvantages of a written constitution. One, it cannot address emergencies since it is rigid, difficult to amend. So when there is a case of emergency, then it cannot easily address it. Especially emergencies that require constitutional amendment. Also, it was better in a heterogeneous society. It's not really essential in a homogeneous society that we practice a unitary state, a unitary system of government that does not require its constitution to be in one document. It can create double loyalty due to levels of government. You have the federal, you have the state government. So it creates double loyalties in the citizens because they are loyal to different levels of government. It is difficult to interpret some clauses because of the uh, technicality and the terms used in actually codifying this uh, document. Also, the, uh, the clauses of the Constitution. Also, it makes the judiciary too powerful because that's the final arbiter in interpretation of the Constitution. It's only the judiciary that can interpret the provisions of the Constitution, so it makes it powerful. Um, it is difficult to amend. It's also a problem on its own. Now, it is not easily understood by ordinary citizens because of the language of coaching the Constitution. Now, let's look at another type of constitution. Remember, we're talking about constitutions based on the codification, the documentation. We have what we call the unwritten constitution. Now, what do we mean by an unwritten constitution? Now, this is a type of constitution that the provisions are found, are not found in a single document. So, we're not trying to say, we're not saying that it is not documented. But the provisions are not in a single document. You see, in such constitution, you see many things serve as the constitution, the conventions of the people, acceptable practices, their traditions form part of the, form part of the constitution, their history form part of the constitution, laws made by the legislature forms part of the constitution, judicial precedents form part of the constitution. So you see many documents form part of the constitution. So it is not in one single document. Rather, it's found in different uh, documents and can have different ways of referencing it. Now, let's look at the features of an unwritten constitution. Now, the provisions, like we've said, are not in a document, in diff rather in different documents. Two, it's flexible in the sense that it is easy to amend. It does not require stringent or difficult procedures or processes before you can effect amendment on them. Also, it's unitary in the sense that this constitution usually concentrates governmental powers in one single authority. Also, it is adopted in a small homogeneous state or society because it is unitary in character, where, which is usually adopted in small societies. Then, customs, traditions, and Conventions are usually 
applied in this constitution. Now let's look at the merits. One, it is easy to amend. So it's a merit on its own. It's not difficult when the amendment need arises. Also, <clears throat> it brings political unity in a unitary state. Since it provides for a unitary system of government that concentrates governmental powers and one authority, and therefore we don't have levels of government, so it brings political unity among citizens of a state. It can address emergencies. Why do we say it can address emergencies? Because the constitution is easy to amend. So in case of any emergency, you can easily amend this constitution. Then there is no double loyalty in this constitution because governmental powers are concentrated in one authority recognizes only one level of authority which the citizens owe their loyalty to that level, only that level of government. Then the judiciary is not too powerful. Here we talk about uh, the legislature being more very powerful because that the source of authority and the state because any law they may stand and they can amend it any day, any time. Now, let's look at the demerits. There could be conflict. It could be conflicting since it is not in a single document. So you can have different documents saying different things. It can be easy, it cannot be easily referenced or consulted. You can't cite it easily because it's not clearly arranged in one document. Then it encourages arbitrary rule. Since it can be easily amended, therefore it can be easily manipulated or bent in the interest of the ruling class. Also, it cannot, it's not effective in checking the powers of government because the citizen cannot easily reference where the powers of government are stipulated. So it's not effective in checking the powers of government. Also, it does not suit a large and heterogeneous society. A large and heterogeneous society actually needs a federal constitution. Now, let's look at constitution based on amendment procedure. We have what we call a rigid constitution, another type of constitution. This is the fourth one we are discussing. Now, when you talk about a rigid constitution, we are talking about a type of constitution that requires difficult or stringent measures or processes before it can be amended. Therefore, it's a constitution that cannot be amended easily because the constitution itself stipulates that procedure, that stipulates a stringent procedure, a difficult procedure before you can amend it. That's a rigid constitution. And a rigid constitution is a written constitution. So it has all the features of a written constitution. And countries who can see this constitution, can see it in Nigeria, can see United States, Canada, India, you can see them. And then the other type, the opposite of a rigid constitution is the fourth constitution we're going to talk about, which is a flexible constitution. Now it's a constitution that does not require a special or stringent procedure to be amended. In other words, this is a constitution that can be easily amended. So it requires the process of making ordinary laws to make a such, amend such constitution. It can be easily amended. So countries that practice this constitution, this constitution is also unwritten. Every flexible constitution is unwritten. Can say countries that practice the constitution, look at countries like Ghana, United Kingdom, Israel, they practice this type of unit, uh, constitution because they are unitary states. Now, this constitution, flexible constitution, has all the features, advantages, and di uh, disadvantages of an unwritten constitution. Why rigid constitution has the features, advantages, and disadvantages of uh, a, a written constitution? Now, let's look at another type of constitution. Now, this is a uh, constitution based uh, on powers sharing. How uh, <coughs> powers are shared between one level of government and the other. Now, here we have the fifth constitution, which is the federal constitution. Now, this is a constitution that shares governmental powers between the central government and the component units. In other words, this constitution recognizes levels of government. So you normally see this constitution whenever you talk about a federal government. 
countries like Nigeria, United States, India, Canada, they belong and others, they belong to these type of constitution. And you must take note of this, a federal constitution is rigid and written. So it has all the features, advantages and disadvantages of a written constitution. Now, on the other hand, we have what we call the unitary constitution. Now, unitary constitution is a, consti a constitution that concentrates governmental powers in one central authority. So it recognizes one level of government. Now, you need to know that a unitary constitution is flexible and unwritten. So therefore, you see countries like United Kingdom, Ghana, Israel, and other unitary states operating this kind of constitution. The unitary constitution itself has the features, advantages, and disadvantages of a unitary, I mean, of uh, an unwritten constitution. <clears throat> now, let's look at a confederate constitution. Now, when we talk about this, this is the seventh type of constitution we are talking about. Now, it's a constitution that provides for a political union of sovereign states in which the sharing of governmental powers is tilted in favor of component units. So, in a unit, a confederal state, you see, is a union of sovereign states in which the component units that make up such union retain their sovereignty and independence and can easily pull out of the union. So a constitution that establishes such kind of union is what we call a confederal constitution. A confederal constitution actually is unwritten and is flexible in nature. Now, Let's look at what we call constitutionalism. What do we mean by constitutionalism? <clears throat> now, we can say first as a political doctrine or theory that stipulates that the actions of government must be limited by the constitution. So it's a limited government according to the constitution. It, also, it is also defined as adherence to the constitutional provisions and principles by government. So it means it is a theory, it's an ideology that stipulates that every government is under the constitution or must operate according to the provisions of the constitution. So constitution itself is fundamental law, rules and regulations by which a government, uh, in, um, by which a state is governed. Why constitutionalism is implementation? strict adherence to the provisions of this constitution in the conduct and activities of the government. Now, why do we have talk about constitutionalism? What purpose does it have? One, constitutionalism that adherence to the provisions of the constitution by the government promotes the rule of law. It promotes it because it supports the fact that the law is supreme above every or everybody. Now, second one is it prevents arbitrary and dictatorial rule because rulers are made to be subject to the constitution and operate according to the principles or provisions of the constitution. The purpose, another purpose of constitutionality is to ensure the protection of human rights, that human rights are protected. Also, it ensures orderliness in government, that things done in an established and the right way without violating the uh, provisions of the constitution. Also, it promotes democracy. Democracy is in line. And the constitutionalism is in line with democracy because it guards against dictatorship and arbitrary rule. Constitutionalism promotes supremacy of the constitution. That's the constitution being the highest authority in the land and also it limits the powers of the government, ensuring that no government will abuse its power and uh, be more powerful. Now, let's take a practice on our exam guide, SSCE, based on the topic, Constitutional and Constitutionalism. We click at random for ye. Our topic of interest, of course, we select the constitutions. 
that's what we are selecting constitution um, now we click OK mm. get started so we are going to be looking at questions relating to what we did in constitution a constitution is said to be flexible when the provisions are a scattered in several books b mainly in one document b i mean c known by the rulers d easy to amend now is scattered in several books different documents now a constitution that requires an absolute majority of members of the parliament to be amended absolute majority so it means we are dealing with a rigid constitution that is difficult to amend now a constitution is said to be rigid if it is a difficult to amend that's what we list there of course on written b it's about um, a flexible constitution c it can be amended is, uh, by the president only well, uh, of course we don't have that constitution except if it is flexible a decree by soldier no now look at this a feature of rigid constitution is that it requires a one-third of majority for its amendment b the votes of the electorate for its amendment c amendment by the judiciary d special amendment procedure this is the answer because we talked about stringent measures before you can amend it now an agreed set of rules prescribing the governance of a country that's determining how a state gov a country is governed of course is constitution manifesto is the program of a political party charter is not really a constitution it's an agreement between states so hansa is not also part of it now which of the following countries is operating a unitary constitution Great Britain is the main country. Canada is federal. Um, America is federal. Nigeria is a federal constitution. <clears throat> now, right to rule based on, okay, it is not on constitution. A constitution is important because it, A, describes the laws and admonishes obedience. B, teaches moral values of the society. C, serves as a source of conflict in the society. No. D prescribes the rules for those who govern. That is how they will govern. Very good. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode mark mode and the practice mode it also has other features that make learning fun it is a must for all serious students download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet see you in the next class don't forget to subscribe to our channel hit the notification bell and share the video